the research vessel, um, when you get on it, you know, you're kind of assigned a room. And these rooms have two bunks per room. And your bunk is assigned by scientific experience, sort of like rank in the Navy almost. But I got the bottom bunk because I was technically more experienced than um, the volunteer who I was in the room with. And so, you know, you have a bunk and every room has closets and, you know, desks. And then you share a bathroom with the next bunk over. So it's all a little industrial feeling, but it's fun because you're in this like very marine, like Navy almost feeling experience. And then um, you all eat in this big dining hall together and you let the crew go first. And some of the crew is very old time sailory with real like anchor tattoos and just everything you've ever imagined about being at sea you're actually seeing at sea and so there's this big mess hall where you all eat and then there's a movie room and there's an old library and you know things you've never thought about having to deal with at sea you have to deal with like in front of the books in the library there's a little metal bar so the books don't fall off in rough seas. And there's these metal bars in front of the DVDs in the library or in the movie room. And um, for our scientific equipment, this becomes a huge ordeal dealing with rough seas because you have to screw down the microscopes and you have to screw down all your little Petri dishes. Like you have to build them barriers basically because sometimes you're trying to still do science in the middle of decently choppy seas and everything's kind of sloshing back and forth and so you get really good at um, tying everything down and dealing with bungee cords and making sure everything is secure. Um, and that's always a funny experience is sometimes you'll hear in the middle of the night something crash and you're just like, oh no, where did it fall? Like, what did I lose? And that's, it's a fun experience actually because it's just a new added element is you're really at sea and everyone, everyone starts to kind of walk like this and then you come back to land and you can still feel, you still feel it. You really have to get your land legs back. So that's a fun adventure. And I learned a lot about being at sea. I learned um, from some of the sailors how to tie old knots. And I learned some old sailor games. Um, sailors love to play this card game called cribbage, which I'd never played before. So I'd play it every night with the cook. And I learned the difference between like first mates and first engineers and all these funny things. Like, I mean, you're really at sea, so <laughs> it's a fun thing. I only got seasick, I think, the second day. So most people um, actually only get seasick the first and second day when you're near shore. And in the middle of the ocean, it's actually much harder to get seasick. You're just more used to it, and it's actually much calmer after you get through the first and second day. Um, there are the rare unlucky few that still stay seasick, but... Most people um, actually get used to it after like the first or second day. So I only got seasick once in a month, which was very lucky for me. Um, yeah, you know, some people are so seasick on like a day snorkeling trip and then they go out for a month and they're totally fine. So <laughs> the farther out you go, the better you do. <laughs>